president of the Congress of Union Retirees of Canada. I'm talking to Rick. Randy Millage, a regional representative with QP from the Ontario region. What is the big picture for your, for your members in terms of pensions and what are the concerns, Randy Millage? Well, I think the, the, the demographic for public employees is very much similar to the demographic for the overall society. Uh, what's interesting in that is my father began working when he was 14 years of age and retired at 71 years of age. Uh, when I started working, the average person in the workforce started at 18 years of age and retired at 65, and it became a mandatory retirement time. Now the average person with higher education is entering into the workforce at uh, 20 years uh, of age, 25 years of age, and uh, it connects it as, as early as 55. Uh, the average life expectancy is to 85. So we have the potential now to have retirement periods on average to be as long as a person's working career, 25 years of working career, 25 years of expected hopefully healthy retirement. That's a huge issue for the economy to face and for the rest of us to face. By the year uh, 2020, it's expected that there'll be one full-time working person for every pension, every person who's on pension. Uh, and one of the issues now, using a little bit of foresight, is to make sure that the pension systems are, are, are su basically sufficient, that the integrity of them is protected and the security of them is there. Uh, to ensure that the monies employees have paid into and the employers have paid into uh, is available and sufficient to maintain them in their retirement years. Otherwise, it becomes a huge burden on the rest of society and potentially a devastating one if we're forcing senior citizens into retirement. I've been talking to representatives from the steel industry, the auto industry, and of course they've been facing major layoffs and they have questions of fun the fundability of their pensions. Are there questions of the fundability of public pensions here in Ontario? There are, uh, absolutely. Uh, they tend to be funded jointly by contributions from the employees and the employers. In the times where the stock market's investment uh, mechanisms were functioning well, uh, employers started looking for contribution holidays and suggesting there should be periods of time where they didn't contribute at all in good times. Of course, they don't want to contribute more in bad times, and with the uh, recession, the collapse of the markets over the last few years, it's very slow recovery. Uh, many of these pension plans are, are putting themselves in positions where their solvency rates uh, are lower than will be necessary to maintain the expected uh, wave of baby boomers that are heading to retirement age. So that's a big issue. There's also the issue that governments in trying to save money will try and do what the private corporations have done and retroactively uh, walk away from their responsibilities to fund those pension plans. Uh, so it's a, it's a big concern for public employees. Uh, first of all, as a matter of social policy, looking about uh, pensions that are available and, uh, and sufficient for everyone. And then obviously, as a Canadian Union of Public Employees, a uh, primary concern of making sure that our negotiations and, and uh, political work takes care of the needs of the members as they head towards their retirement years as well. What would be some of the prominent examples of public employers trying to walk away from pension obligations? The biggest one have been employers looking for uh, contribution holidays. Uh, that certainly happened within the healthcare sector. It's happened within the municipal sectors uh, in Ontario. Uh, in the those that period of the late 80s uh, through the 90s, where the stock market was performing fairly well, and especially with the big boom in the at the millennium time, uh, employers looked to be able to walk away from their contribution uh, obligations because the returns on investment were quite high, and the solvency rates then were were fairly high. Uh, what's happened with the collapse of the markets is that uh, that those investment returns have now dropped. Uh, and, of course, anyone who had been granted a contribution holiday in the past hasn't been in a position of having to repay that amount. And potentially that can be quite damaging to the long-term actuarial prospects of a pension plan. There are layoffs occurring in hospitals across Ontario, as I understand it, especially some of the smaller ones. Are there people who are looking at pension problems right now who are facing those kinds of layoffs? Uh, absolutely, and it's not just a layoff problem. It's an issue that we have. If, if someone uh, is subject to a layoff, then their contributions come to an end at that period of time. They have difficulty uh, qualifying for early retirement benefits, wait for a longer period of time, obviously have a lower amount of pension. 
but many uh, many of those jobs, full-time jobs, are being eliminated by attrition. They're being replaced by uh, an increasingly casualized or part-time workforce, and those folks have very limited contributions, very limited uh, protection by pensions. Uh, so for them, it's an enormous difficulty, and that is a problem that uh, that is applies to everyone, but accrues mostly to women. If you know the economic reports released by the federal government in the last few weeks, say the only growing area in employment in Canada is women's employment, which sounds very progressive, except the reason it's growing is that it's mostly part-time and casualized work that provides lower rates of pay and lower benefits. Uh, so that becomes a major issue of unions fighting to uh, uh, increase women's wages, increase women's earnings, and the benefit protection that they would have as they go on through their working lives as well. What kind of solutions, uh, what kind of long-term solutions is QP proposing and working towards to, to head off the kind of crisis that could occur when you have as many people on pensions as, as in the workforce? Well, the first issue is uh, one that would seem to ostensibly make a lot of sense to everybody, which is that, that people maintain their long-term pension obligations, both from the employer's perspective and the union's perspective, that an employer should not be able to dig into pension funds to reduce pension benefits or to reduce their contributions uh, simply because they're experiencing difficulty in, 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 the, in the economy. So the integrity, QP supports all the private sector groups, the private sector uh, workers, and you know, in really looking for government to legislate to protect the integrity of those plans so they can't be dug into. The second major issue is to increase the uh, b level of benefit provided by the Canada Pension Plan, the old age security systems, so that employees who've worked full time, who've worked substantially through their careers, uh, and who haven't been participating in a pension plan will have a pension benefit that's capable of sustaining them uh, with dignity uh, in their retirement years. Thank you very much, Randy Millage.